In this clip we'll talk about matrix inverse, linear independence and matrix rank. Now recall the context in which we are discussing this. It's a multiple linear regression model. Here we have y equals x beta plus u and in particular we are interested in your less estimate of beta. Beta hat equals x prime x inverse x prime y. So in, we can immediately see there is an inversion required. That's what we call a matrix inversion to the power of negative 1. So let's uh, get the naming sorted. So we call something to the power of negative 1. If it is a matrix, we call that the inverse. So x prime x to the power of negative 1 is called the inverse of x prime x. More generally, we can calculate an inverse of a matrix A, some conditions on that later, and A to the power of negative 1, if A is a matrix, is called the inverse of A. Okay, So one property of the inverse is that if we calculate A times A inverse, what we get is the identity matrix. Okay, So we'll get back to this. Up here, if we calculate x prime x times x prime x inverse, we also get the identity matrix. Okay, So it's always a matrix multiplied with its inverse gives the identity matrix, the definition of an inverse. When we deal with scalars, say c, then c to the power of negative 1 really means 1 over c. So it's really division by c. And you should think of matrix inversion as being a bit like dividing by a matrix. I put that in inverted commas as there are some important differences to scalar division. So if you go back to the scalar example, if you calculate c times c to the negative 1, we get 1 as well. So that's one of the similarities between scalar division and matrix inversion. We know, of course, from the uh, even from scalar division, that division isn't always possible. So that's interesting to separate these situations out. And talking about scalar division, we know that this is not possible or not defined if our scalar c is actually equal to zero. We know that we cannot divide by zero. In terms of matrix inversion, there are really two conditions we need for this to work. First, we need to work with square matrices. Okay, so what we had up there, the A or the X prime X, they all need to be square. So what does that mean? We should really, when we note it down here what inversion means, generally we should really say for square for a square matrix A. Now the same is valid for X prime X. Now in our world, in our setup, X was an N by K matrix, so X prime is K by N times N by K. So by definition that X prime X is already a square matrix. Okay, And therefore we can uh, apply matrix inversion to it from that perspective. The second condition is that the matrix which we want to inverse really has to be what we call a non-singular matrix. Okay, non-singular matrix. Now what that means, that comes next. Okay, what means non-singular? Let's talk about it. So a matrix is going to be either singular or non-singular. Singular is sort of the bad stuff. Okay, you don't want a matrix to be singular in most cases. They're good, good singular matrices too, but not in this context. So matrix is called singular if it has columns that are what are called linearly dependent. Okay, what does that mean? So we need to start out thinking of a particular matrix. Let's call that matrix A and it consists of say M columns. Oh, so what do we mean? Let's write down the matrix A and Let's not write down every element, just but just every column. A1 is a whole column. A2 is the second column, and so forth, up to AM. That's the mth column. And if there is linear dependence, then we can write down the following equation. So we'll create a linear combination of all the columns, so lambda 1, lambda, the lambdas are scalars, lambda 1 times a1 all the way to 
lambda m times a m and that equals zero. Now if that equation has what we call a non-trivial solution, I'll say quickly what that is in a moment, if it has a non-trivial solution then there's linear dependence and then the matrix is singular. Now what is a trivial solution? Now if all the lambdas are zero then obviously that equation is true. So that's the trivial solution. So if there is a solution to that equation that does not set all the lambdas to zero, so if there's another solution to the non-trivial solution to this asterisk equation, then we call the matrix A singular. Okay? Then we say A is singular. And if that is the case, A inverse does not exist. Okay? So that's very important. So let's look at an example. We'll be uh, looking at a matrix A. That is a 2 by 2 matrix, so it's square. First condition, tick. Or I can potentially calculate the inverse. And I want you yourself to see whether there's linear dependence. So click pause and check it. So, first we write down the equation system, the asterisk equation. Lambda 1 times the first column plus lambda 2 times the second column equals 0. So this is like a two equation system. Let's look at the second equation here. Lambda 1 times 2 plus lambda 2 times 2 equals 0. It's obvious that if we were to use lambda 1 equals 1 and lambda 2 equals negative 1, that this second equation would be true. So let's write that down. 1 times 2 plus negative 1 times 2 is indeed 0. If we now use that 1 and negative 1 for the first equation, that's the green bit here, let's see whether that's true as well. But we realize that a 7 minus 1, that is 6, that is not equal to 0. So that trial solution we used up there wasn't a solution. It turns out that in this case only the trivial solution works. Only lambda 1 equals lambda 2 is equal to 0 solves that equation. And therefore A is non-singular, meaning that we can calculate the inverse of A. We can calculate A inverse. It also turns out that the two columns which we looked at there are really independent. Okay, so A has two independent columns. And one way of saying that, I should really say two linearly independent columns. And one way, a different way of saying that is to say that matrix A has rank 2. Okay, so two independent columns. A has rank 2. It also turns out that the determinant of A is going to be unequal to 0. I'm not going to talk about determinants here. Second example, here's matrix B and here we write down the equation system we need to solve. Okay, so we'll look at the first equation. That's quite easy to see what we would need here for this to be true. Here we would need lambda 1 negative 2 and lambda 2 equals 1 because then we would have negative 2 times negative 7 plus 1 times 14 that would be 0. So let's see whether that solution works for the second equation as well. We use negative 2 and 1 and indeed that's 0 as well. So this lambda 1 lambda 2 negative 2 and 1 is indeed a non-trivial solution to our equation system asterisk. Okay, so that means that B is a singular matrix and B inverse is not defined. Turns out that the two columns are not linearly independent. There's only one linearly linearly independent column, therefore rank is 1, and it turns out the determinant is 0, without talking about that more in detail here. Recall the context in which we are working. We want to calculate our less parameter estimates, and that's the formula, and we need to calculate x prime x inverse, so we need to in be able to invert that. x, of course, in our context contains columns with explanatory variables in our multiple regression model. This was the regression model. And you may recall from your econometrics class 
that uh, you've been told to not use explanatory variables that are linearly dependent. Why was that so? Well, now we can work it out. And we'll use a couple of examples. Example, that's our third example in this clip. So the first example to do this, I have an x, where the first column is a 1, so this is like using a constant, having a constant in your regression model, and the second column is just something else. So let's calculate x prime x, because this is what we need to invert. So we need to use matrix multiplication. We um, multiply x prime, which is 2 by 3 with x, which is 3 by 2, we get a 2 by 2 matrix, and that should be a second nature, that is just the square, some of the squares, so we get as a result this matrix. So the question is, so this is x prime x, the question is, is that singular or not? So we can see to, to make the first line zero in our linear combination, we need a 4, so 4 times 3 is 12, but 4 times 12 isn't 62. So it's obvious, you can do it in more detail, that this is a non-singular matrix. X prime X can indeed be calculated. What about our second example? Here we use an X matrix, which looks like this. And now I want you to press the pause button and try whether X prime X is singular or not. So let's calculate X prime X. So we need x prime here, up there is x. So we get again a 2 by 2 matrix as a result. 6 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 is there. Then we get 12 times 6 plus 4 times 2 plus 2 by times 1. We get the same value here. It's a diagonal matrix, x prime x. And then we get 12 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared. So the result here is a matrix with these values. Okay, so that's x prime x. And now we can very quickly see that the first column, if we multiply it with 2, we get exactly the second column. So that means our, there's a non-trivial solution for lambda 1 and lambda 2. x prime x is singular. Turns out there's only one linearly independent column resulting also in a zero determinant of x prime x and x prime x inverse is not defined. So, here we had an example where x prime x inverse is not defined and what does that mean? That means if you have a regression model which uses an x matrix like this which has linear depend, linearly dependent explanatory variables then you actually cannot calculate the OLS estimators beta hat. No way. I should add at this stage that I actually haven't shown you in this clip how to calculate an inverse. That's usually done by a piece of software anyway, but there are lots of clips available where you can see how to invert it. Here it was only important when we would be able to do that.